Okay, um, so for uh, this asynchronous lesson, we're actually going to go through the Stripling JCC Guide-On, otherwise known as the Cadet Handbook. So the first thing it talks about is it talks about the history of our school, WC Stripling Middle School, and this information might be something that you are asked questions about during the course of inspections and any of the other activities that we're going to do. JCC program. This is describing the JCC program. It gives you the mission, motto, and honor code, which are things that we're going to be looking at again uh, later in this uh, book. And then it talks about some of the activities that we get to do. Um, and you know, some of these are uh, annual events. Some of them are not. Uh, it just depends on kind of what happens with our world and, and COVID. JCC symbolism. Symbolism is important for us to understand because uh, symbols are ways that we recognize uh, different things. For example, the United States of America is represented by the eagle or by our flag. The state of Texas is represented by the uh, single star for the Lone Star State and our flag and the flag of Texas. In this case, with JCC symbolism, the star, as it says here, reflects the cadets' commitment to discipline, school, community, and citizenship, which is going to help. Uh, shape their lives in becoming better citizens. Uh, the infinitum loop is, um, it symbolizes the infinite amount of knowledge, discipline, and respect the Junior Cadet Corps program instills in its cadets for the rest of their lives. And then the array of lights uh, above that infinitum loop symbolizes life opportunities and paths that are open to cadets and planning your adult lives. Colors, blue is a sign of truth, which is the foundation of the Junior Cadet Corps Honor Code. I do not lie, cheat, or steal, and will always be accountable for my actions. And silver is a sign of pride. Uh, it's one of the cornerstones in the cadet's sense of self-confidence and esteem and their abilities to overcome life's challenges. And you can see the logo right here. So here's the star. And then we've got uh, the infinitum loop above that. And behind the infinitum loop are the array of lights. And then you have the colors blue and silver. That uh, logo is actually designed by a cadet from McLean Middle School um, at the very beginning of the program. Chapter 1. Chapter 1 is going to talk about professional courtesy. Um, obviously, in a virtual environment, um, you know, uh, having you stand at the position of parade rest when speaking to the instructor doesn't make sense. Um, however, however, you do need to make sure that you are always responding uh, respectfully. Um, you will hear me address you all as Mr. and Mrs. Um, my title is Sergeant. Um, so you want to make sure that you are addressing people by their titles and with respect. Now, saluting uh, in this environment, um, we, it, you know, we will ultimately end up bringing in saluting. It's just a matter of figuring out where that fits with uh, the virtual environment. Anytime you are greeting somebody um, or saluting somebody, the person who is junior, meaning um, a uh, cadet is going to salute um, the class leader before the class leader will salute them. So um, if I was approaching a colonel, I would deliver the, uh, in, right now it's you know 2.43 in the afternoon, I would render the hand salute and I'd say, good afternoon, sir. And then I would hold my salute until they return it and then I would drop it. Okay. Um, anytime the flag passes, you stand and salute at the position of attention. Once it's done passing, you uh, drop your salute. Um, anytime that uh, flag is being raised or lowered, you're going to salute. You just always need to understand that. Um, and you know, in our even in our virtual classrooms, there is a possibility that we will get a visit from um, the JROTC staff. So we need to recognize them and uh, adapt and ad address them by their rank and title. Now, chapter two talk, talks about discipline. And um, all of you um, have uh, signed or at least completed the uh, uh, I am a cadet contract. Uh, chapter 3 talks about the uh, desired learning outcomes. Chapter 4 gets into the uniform requirements. Now, because of the way our uh, everything is set up right now with you guys being virtually, 
you haven't been issued a uniform uh, when we come back in person or um, you know as we move forward in the year I may have a pickup time for people to get their uniform so that we can do uniform inspections um, remotely we'll figure that out when we get there um, the pants uh, can be any black pant just not skinny jeans all right um, the shoes need to be black they can be tennis uh, shoes or athletic shoes or dress shoes it's uh, really whatever is most comfortable for you in regards to being black I'm talking like mostly black so 90 percent black means maybe it has a white sole but the rest of the shoe is black that would be acceptable and then the gray polo shirt I will provide to you um, when you are wearing your uniform uh, you're gonna wear the shirt you'll wear the pants you'll wear your black footwear um, you'll wear a black belt and then uh, when we get name tags, I'll get those to you. That is the uniform that you'll wear for inspections. Uh, that's where you, the uniform you'll wear for parades or other uh, events that we're going through. Now, uh, Chapter 5 talks about dress and appearance. Um, and chapter six talks about uh, personal grooming. Now, um, underwear the uniform. Notice it says here that cadets are required to wear a white t-shirt, crew neck, that means uh, neck like this, uh, when you're in uniform. So underneath your gray shirt, you're expected to have a white t-shirt, right? So personal grooming. Men, your hair will be clean and cut present a neat groomed appearance hair must not touch the ears or the shirt collar um, earrings will not be worn when in uniform uh, and the hair will not be worn in an extreme or fat style such as a mohawk ducktail or braids um, and any color other than normal color is not authorized okay no visible piercing on the face nose or tongue um, although I can't imagine any of you would have any of those done currently for females same thing, right? So when you're in uniform, your hair must be pulled back into a bun. Um, fingernails. Fingernails uh, can be painted, ladies. Uh, however, they need to be uh, light pink or other natural color, you know, purple, fluorescent orange, uh, fluorescent green or neon green or any other kind of crazy color is not accepted. Earrings, ladies, need to be small, conserved gold, white, or silver, uh, round, or clip earrings. Um, the, the, in whatever case, the earrings must fit close against the ear. Reason for that is if we're doing physical activities and you're wearing earrings, we don't want them to catch and to tear your ears. Chapter 7, Entering the Classroom. Obviously, we're not currently entering the classroom, so we'll talk about that as we as we move forward and, and get back on campus. Same thing with uh, Chapter 8, which is Classroom Procedures and Rules. Still make sure you're reading over these. Uh, same thing with Departing Classroom, uh, Cadet File. That's more stuff connected to in-person. Um, although we are doing the electronic portfolios this year, so... Um, as we move forward into um, our time together, uh, we'll talk about the e-portfolio and, and how that's going to work and what your expectations are. Okay, Chapter 11 talks about positions and responsibilities. So the Commander Cadet is head honcho. I mean, I, that's the top uh, ranking cadet in the JCC program, and they are in charge of all cadets on campus. The assistant commander cadet supports them and assists in uh, daily function. Uh, each class will have a class leader and then there'll be squad leaders as well. So each person is responsible for somebody else. All right, rank and promotions. Um, this gives you all the information you need to know what you need to know in order to promote. To promote to a cadet private, you need four hours of community service. Uh, you need to take the test, in which case you need to be able to uh, recite from menu, uh, memory, mission, motto, and honor code. Um, and then you need to be able to identify both the ranks of cadet enlisted and cadet officers. Uh, for private first class, 
Um, you need to have eight hours of community school service. You need to be able to identify all the cadet ranks. You also need to be able to recite from memory, mission, motto, and honor code. You'll need to know the chain of command, which I'll be providing for you. And then you need to be able to identify all of the active duty ranks inside the United States Army. For promotion to corporal, you need 12 hours of community service. Uh, you need to be able to identify all the ranks. Uh, you're also going to have to uh, know mission, motto, and honor code, identify the chain of command, all um, uh, ranks, uh, active duty, mil uh, army. You're going to have to know the JCC objectives, and then there is a, a series of 22 commands that you're going to have to uh, march the group through. Um, Grading policy, this gives you the makeup policy as well as late work policy. Um, you notice under the grading, uh, there's three categories. Formative assessments were 30%, summative with 60%, and then homework with 10%. Um, right now, because of the virtual environment, there is no homework. Uh, so formative is worth 30 and sum summative is worth 70. Okay. Special teams, talks about the special teams we have. Drill team, color guard, orienteering. Chapter 15 talks about physical fitness. We will be doing physical fitness even in the remote environment. I have lessons set up for you. Talks about the formal inspection. Um, field trips under chapter 16. Um, our field trips this year are going to be virtual unless we end up back on campus and actually can take uh, students somewhere, um, but right now it'll be all virtual. Then you have the private promotion requirements and the ranks, PFC and corporal promotion requirements, and then the army ranks, and then it talks about the corporal promotion requirements, and then there's a list of the 22 commands, and again another list of the ranks. Cadet knowledge, these are questions that you can be asked. Um, for example, in uh, inspection or formation, I can ask you, what is the JCC mission? And you would resp respond with, uh, prepare students for responsible leadership roles while making them aware of their rights, responsibilities, and privileges of American citizens. Okay. Uh, it talks about the cadet rank structure, because uh, you need to know those cadet ranks. Uh, then there's some drill and ceremony questions, some citizenship questions, general question and then we have a set of new questions this additional cadet, uh, cadet knowledge is new for those who've been with me in the past um, these are other questions that I can ask you and then alma mater uh, which is a song I'll, I'll teach you the tune and maybe we'll all sing it together SMS code this is a code for us to live by uh, to ensure that we are following the uh, objectives and tenets of the JCC program. And then we have um, American Military Customs and Courtesies, so it talks about how you address them, um, decision making and problem solving, uh, it's a model on how to do that, national anthem, and then, uh, you know, what the expectations are for uh, when someone is leading or is in a leadership position, uh, what they have to do at a minimum, and then this is an eight-step process for troop leading procedures. We're going to spend more time learning about those procedures and how you utilize them. Army values. Uh, the Army values are loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, and personal courage. Uh, and then the, here are the 11 principles of leadership. Um, then we have ranks of the Air Force, enlisted and officer. Ranks of the Navy, listed and officer. Uh, ranks of the United States Marine Corps, enlisted and officer. All right. And so that is, ladies and gentlemen, the um, new cadet guide on or JCC guide on and cadet handbook.